All right, you've seen in the last video here that we were dealing with some hay that got too dry on us. And this alfalfa hay, what you want to do is you want to cut it all oh, about a day and a half, anywhere from a day and a half to two days before you chop it, especially this heavy stuff, just so that it can be added to moisture. That it needs to be chopped, that we like to chop the hay anywhere, right, right around 55% moisture. And that got down in below 50 a little bit. And what it was doing is it was gumming up the chopper very much like what happens to your lawnmower when you mow your grass. You got all that caked up material. And that material uh, that gets built up on the metal pans, that haylage has to blow past it a couple of feet before it gets to the floor. And if that uh, feed is slowed down at all as it exits the knife drum, and as it's going to the blower uh, itself, if that stuff slows down, it plugs up that transition chute. So we were spraying uh, water on it just to uh, break up that caked up material, and that was working as you've seen in that last video. Now we've got our fertilizer truck over here now, or the truck that we use for fertilizer when we planted corn. It's got a 700 gallon tank on it and a 3,000 gallon tank. I ended up cleaning the fertilizer out of them and rinsing the tanks out here. Monday morning we've got that full of water so we are not going to have any more problems with, well, that is going to be able to aid in the event that we have a problem with this alfalfa hay here getting too dry on us. Uh, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to change the sharpening stone. You've seen the knives were getting sharpened in that last video. And they say you can get about 450 cycles. That cycles back and forth across the knives out of one of these stones. You can get more like 540, 525 or so. So we're going to reach down in there. Um, it's got... On the older choppers, they had a cable that ran back and forth, and then it just it rotated a hydraulic motor um, that rolled the cable back and forth, and that made the knife sweep mechanism move to one side and then back again. This one's got a chain on it, and there's several ways that you can change this stone. Um, one way you can do it is you can take this panel off the side here. Uh, I guess it drops down out of the bottom. You take that out of there and take the stone out that way and push it back up through the bottom. I've done it that way once and I'll never do it that way again. Another way you can do it is the way that we're gonna do it now. We're gonna take the eight millimeter bolt out of the little piece that is on this chain and we're gonna let the mechanism slide over into the center here so we can um, get at the 10 millimeter bolts or the 10 millimeter nuts rather that are on the uh, stone itself. The third way you can do it is that you can go in the armrest control and what you can do is you can calibrate the um, stone sweep mechanism and what you do when you go into the calibration as you do several steps the first step is It'll have you flip the spout in the up position that opens the door and then the next uh, step is you make sure that you bring the stone sweep all the way to the right. The third step is you move it all the way over to the left. Well, when you're moving it all the way over to the left, watch the number down in the bottom of that calibration page. You can move it like halfway, stop, shut the chopper off, take your nuts off uh, pull the stone up slide the stone out from underneath put the new one in and go from there um, doing it that way though you can't move this mechanism by hand and if you can move it by hand it it's a little easier because you can put the stone down in between the knives and push it up in there and if it's hitting on the knives at all instead of turning the drum you can just move this mechanism back and forth so Let's get this uh, stud out of here, this little bolt. We'll slide this over and we'll show you what that looks like when we get this slid over to the uh, center there. It looks like we can maybe get another rain shower here. Uh, today, uh, once we get this project done, 
we're going to go back to the shop and we're going to start cleaning up the corn planter. I have uh, checked about all of our corn and then all of it is up so we shouldn't have to do any replanting here. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this bulb out that bolts the um, little mechanism that's on this chain right here that uh, pulls the knife sweep mechanism back and forth. Once we get this bolt out, we're gonna slide it over and we're gonna pull the stone up to uh, the top here. Timmy, what's going on? I'll come back to Melbourne and see you when I went by. I thought, well, maybe I'll see if you need a hand with anything. Nah, you'd be all set. So, we've got this pulled to the top. Or pulled over to the side. Now we'll just take this little paw off of here. Did you get a new valve for it? Or did you? No, I didn't have a valve, so I gotta wait on that. Except that you've had to get in them. Yeah. Alright, so we've got that moved over. Now we are going to pull the stone here to the top. stone has got maybe oh you can maybe run it across the knives another can you hand me that 15 millimeter you can maybe run it across the knives 10 more sweeps but I don't want to have to change this stone um, when we're a little busier chopping here it has rained Oh, quite a bit here in the last couple days. So, we've got the time right now to just swap this guy out of there. Tim's getting a lesson today on how to change this stone, ain't I've you, seen Tim? you do it before. Yeah. What's, uh, how long did that stone last? When did you put that one on? Beginning of corn? Or? Uh, yeah, somewhere during corn. And then, of course, when we did the work on it over the winter, it wasn't ready to be changed, so we left it. And usually you can get about three stones, not quite four, per set of knives. If you hold that up, I'll uh, pull this last nut. Don't want to drop a nut here, you know. Uh, not a good thing. No, never a good thing when you do that. Uh, much yeah, left so on there. Here's the new one, and then here's the old one, and then, of course, you don't want to run it down into the aluminum base here. But uh, yeah, there's probably, yeah, we could probably do 20 sweeps with that. But um, change her out. Drop that down in there. Yeah, come over here. Over there. Is it up high enough? Yeah. Yeah, I can get under it. I just gotta get it. Get lined up here. Can you come your way? There you go. Alright. That's why it's easier to do it this way rather than changing any address or going into the addresses and trying to do here we can move this watch your fingers actually that's got to come up further yeah if you can otherwise here. you're going to be taking a lot of knives off there, you go. there we go that'll now hold it up there nice perfect now it's setting on top of the knife and there's your last knot then I'll start tightening in these. And of course, we're gonna have to set our stone to knife gap oh, here. Man. But before we 
put it back to home, there's a couple of grease cirques on here that are easiest greased if we have this unit in the center. There's one on here that moves, that aids in it, the unit going back and forth on that chrome rod there. And there's another one down on this side here somewhere. Where is it, Tim? Oh. Back side. I don't know. I forget where that other one there's is. There's one on the front here. Yeah, there's one on the front and there's one on I think it's that side. So. Get it off in. I'm going to grab a grease gun. We'll grease this quick and then we'll push her back to home. I've got some crap that I need to get a screwdriver and clean out so that there's a so that this stone can come back all the way here. All right, in here. I was looking for yeah, it. I didn't see it in the back. Three circs right on the back. Oh, my grease gone out of grease. <laughs> Can't be out of grease. Screw that in, man. Good job, down. There we go. There we are. gonna push this from one side to the other and make sure that it's not hitting. You need to push this knife drum back a little bit. On there, Tim. Who did yeah, that? Yeah, fell on the back of the, the old uh, stone that was all greasy. Alright, move that back and forth. Alright, so it's missing the knife, which that's what we want it to do. When that moves all the way over to that other side, a paw hits against here and advances at one tooth. So it advances one tooth every time it moves over to the left side of the chopper, which is the side you guys are on. We usually have to change these stones a couple times a year. We're going to have to put a new set of knives in get a feel for how much hardness is left I'm guessing we're gonna have to put a new set in ah, there's a fair amount I was hoping it needed a set now because I don't want to have to put a set on halfway through a cutting you think you'll need to change them first cutting here or I'll be able to get all the way through first. I just, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get all the way through second. Yeah. I know so. you like putting new ones on when corn comes because corn doesn't beat up on them too bad. Yeah. So I'll just get this 8 millimeter bolt back in here. So I can find the spot. I'm 
nowhere there. And a peg. There we go, I just didn't have it setting down in there. What there is is a nub. Oh, on the chain? On this stone sweep. And then that fits up inside the... Uh... Oh, what did I do with that 15 millimeter? Or no, that's a 13. That's 15. Oh, what did I do to that 13? Is this one? What's that? Oh, I got it in my got pocket. That. Now tighten this stud down, and we got to bring this little ratcheting paw down on there, and then that keeps the uh, stone advancing or the stone drop mechanism in place. So I need that. 15 millimeter wrench. I should have done that when I had it over to that side, Tim. That's okay, you got the right tools. A little ratchet, a little Pittsburgh ratchet wrench. Perfect! Don't forget that. Give her a test then? Nah. All right, we've got that new stone on there and we're gonna put the head on. I don't wanna leave the head off of it because it is starting to sink down in the ground here because we've gotten a fair amount of rain here. And now this is ready for when we have to sharpen the knives after the next day of chopping. You can see we got a little bit of grease on that uh, shaft right there we should maybe run this one time just to wipe that um, grease off because that'll get all caked up with crap there and uh, it'll make it hard for when it sweeps the next time all right the process that I was talking about as far as moving that with the chopper you go into your uh, calibration page here. You go down to sharpening stone position sensor. And it gives you um, the different prompts here. So we've got our uh, cutter head for the cutter head control unit. We're going to sharpen the stone position sensor. Associated components are replaced or adjusted. So we're just going to go through this to show you how it works. Gonna press our spout flap up button that's going to open the door and if you see this number down here that's not really going to change much because the door is already uh, open so now we're going to go to the next step come on ensure the stone is in the part position so we want to move this to the right which that number is not going to change at all I mean, not much, 519 to 525 or so. So that is all the way over to the right. Now we're gonna go to the next step. Now to get all the way over to the left, it's gotta go to 2556. So you move the left-hand directional for the spout. And if you watch that number, that number is gonna change. 4100 or so, 2700, I'm sorry. So, if you just back that off, it came all the way over to the left. If you just back that number off, say to there, it should be about in the center. So we're gonna let it go all the way to the, it's all the way to the left. Now we go to our next step. You have to finish out this process if you put that stone on this way. Now we're gonna move the uh, spout or the uh, stone all the way back to the right. So take this right switch here. If you look at our number, 
525 is at home. So I'm not even going to go through a knife sharpening because I've already wiped all that grease off. Now you have to uh, go to the end of the calibration and the last step is to put the spout down, which is going to put the door down. And you want to watch this number two and make note of it because if that motor didn't go all the way over, that door's not going to close all the way. Calibration is complete. Enter. Calibration is done. Now we'll go ahead and put the head on, providing we didn't end up. Yeah. Providing we didn't end up. Uh, so that we don't end up letting that head sink into the ground here. couple this up and head back to the shop to start washing up the corn planter. Well, why it's got this thing about done. I'm just getting back here now from playing with the chopper. So get this lifted up. Looks like he's got to get inside the wheels a little bit yet. We'll get it half folded. Let him get some areas that he couldn't get with it unfolded he's been down through the tractor kind of a nice day to uh do the washing not only is it miserable out because we can't do anything else but it is hot and sticky so i'm gonna get this lifted up get some things apart on it we got to rinse the fertilizer pump out we usually put motor oil in that drain uh, the hoses out the rest of the way We've got both tanks empty. Nate emptied them earlier. And it looks like all we really need to do is get the rims cleaned up a little better. And then we'll go ahead and put this corn planter away. Last year, when we washed it up, I ended up replacing all of the closing wheels before we put it away, and then we put new iron on it last spring. And we're going to have to address that situation here next spring coming up. But um, usually we go through the bearings on the fertilizer disc and on the no-till coulters anyway. So what we need to mainly do is just get it put away for now and we'll worry about working on it here come uh, next spring. Well, we've got this all washed, and we're going to run over and put it away. I've got to put the jack stands back on there. You can just pick them up, leave them on here, leave them in place, but if you turn short, you can run the risk of hitting the stabilizer bars here, and that would make a mess if you did that. I've got some other goodies up in the cab that I carry with me. But I'm going to end up throwing in one of the hoppers. Here's a roll of fertilizer tube here that I had set aside for the other planter. We're going to make sure that gets in one of the hoppers and I've got some miscellaneous parts up in the cab and whatever and we'll run over and we'll put that away. I've got a spare tire that I put together for this year that I did not have to use this year. Last year we had a couple of flat tires on this planter as we were going through these main frame tires and we ended up putting uh, radials on here and that was a great improvement 
they carry a lot more weight a lot of the guys around here are, are uh, putting radials on the mainframe just with the amount of weight that we're carrying there so let's get our jack stands on we'll run over and put it away and uh, get this tractor back here and get ready for the next thing It took a little bit uh, to get it back into this corner here. Uh, the duels on this tractor are a little bit of a pain in the butt getting through these tight openings here. That door is only like 14 or 15 foot wide. And it took a little bit to maneuver between these them two posts. We don't own this barn. We rent it. And the uh, prior owner... Uh, used to have horses in here, so that's why this fencing and gate stuff is up. Uh, this was Dor Baylor's barn, and he had just a little shop area over there under the mezzanine, and um, there's just concrete on that side there. So uh, we got to put all of our extra parts and hoses and stuff. We're going to shove that in one of the hoppers. We've got to get our various hoses and wires and everything unhooked here we've got zip ties on these so that we know uh, what goes where and um, it makes it easier to hook up uh, the following year we've got the uh, wire harnesses that are plugged into that other side and we'll get everything drooped back over the top of the planter and we won't worry about uh, this guy here until uh, next spring. Now I had a bearing go on one of these uh, gauge wheels and I also had a bearing go on one of the gauge wheels, the seed hopper gauge wheel and I had one go on the fertilizer gauge wheel. And I see I have a bearing gone on one of these. I thought it was number two. Maybe it's number three. I don't know. I forget which one it was now. I seen it when I was rinsing the uh, planter off. There we go. It's number five. So we're going to have to go through and replace all of those bearings next year because they're just going to start slowly going. So let's get these hoses unhooked and we'll get out of here.
All right, so that should do it for that task. We'll come over next spring and grab that planter and put a bunch of work into it. Now, this is the building that we had the chopper in, and what you're seeing right there is hydrated lime that we had around the chopper while it was parked there for the winter. A few months, we'll be over here to grab that corn head and uh, we'll be getting that out of here so that is going to do it for this video folks remember if you like these videos leave me a thumbs up if you would and uh, we'll catch you at the next one take it easy folks one thing i probably should check is see if these cab vents are empty which they are that one's empty this one's empty for those of you that don't know, you can put a canned beverage inside these little vent holders here, these little vent deals, and a 12 ounce can fits perfectly right up in the air duct here.